Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in for another episode of our Time with Jake. This week we're going to talk about atmospheric perspective. And I'm going to show you how to create a painting like this one that's based off of a scene of the uh, train yards not too far from my house looking towards downtown. I'm going to talk about the different tools that I use and the different uh, colors. And we're going to talk about the different concepts of perspective and how to create the, uh, the illusion of space on a two-dimensional surface. Thanks for tuning in. I start by using a projector to trace my reference photo. As you'll see, I'll be using my artistic license to alter the reality of the scene. That tree, for example. I thought I wanted to include it to create more depth as it overlapped the scene, but I ultimately removed the tree because I felt like it made the scene too busy, and it might detract from the eye movement in the more subtle places, like the clouds. You'll see that I also combine photos, using the Nashville skyline from another photo that was taken at the same location, but when the sunset was more intense. Now I'll use a kneaded eraser, which has a consistency similar to Silly Putty, to lighten my pencil lines before applying the paint. These are the tools I'll be using. A palette knife to mix paint, the size 4 filbert, size 1 liner, and smaller round brushes. These are the colors I'll use. Notice it's just warm and cool variations on the primary colors, plus orange, black, and white. I'm painting on a thick piece of mixed media paper with a 184 pound weight. To get started, I like to lay out all the colors I'll be using on my palette. I start in the background of a landscape painting and eventually work towards the foreground. We'll see atmospheric perspective in action when I get to the horizon line, but for now, let's mix a nice peachy sunset color and block that in. Initially I left space for the tree I traced, but I decided to leave it out to simplify the composition. For the sky, I'm referencing a photo, but again, simplifying the clouds and making the colors more saturated. My colors are also complementary pairs. The blue and orange of the sky, the violet and yellow in the clouds, so this zone of the painting will be very dynamic with lots of pop. I've also angled the clouds, so there's some that point slightly towards the focal point in the center. When mixing the colors for the city skyline at the horizon, I used a cool phthalo blue. The skyline in the photo is also blue. Well, that's atmospheric perspective. In order to see these buildings, sunlight must reflect off of their surfaces and pass through over five miles of water, dust, and other particulate matter floating in the air to reach my location near the Harding Place exit on I-65. While the white light in the form of sunlight contains all the colors of the visible light spectrum, the blue happens to be on the end of the spectrum where the wavelength is shorter and readily scattered. This is the same reason why the sky is blue. This even happens in drier climates, where distant red sandstone buttes will appear violet. Because this happens in our natural environment, when artists properly employ this theory, they can create the illusion of distance on a two-dimensional surface. Here's the formula for space. Place a horizon line towards the middle of the page. Objects placed near the horizon line will appear to be in the background, while objects placed toward the bottom of the page will appear to be in the foreground and closer to the viewer. Have objects in the foreground overlap objects in the background or the horizon line. Use scale by making objects in the foreground bigger than objects in the background, also known as foreshortening. Additionally, this composition uses linear perspective, which is two lines running parallel to each other towards the vanishing point on the horizon line. The vanishing point is where the parallel lines would appear to converge, such as the train tracks. Color can also be used to in indicate space, such as warm, saturated colors, with dark values typically advancing in a composition, while cool, low saturation, and light value colors will appear to recede into space. Notice I put more details in the foreground, like the puddle rimmed with the warm neutral colors. This should also help with creating depth, as you typically find more details in the foreground. Since I want the train to appear closer to the viewer, I put the train at the bottom, farther away from the horizon line, which makes it seem in the extreme foreground. The train is blue, a cool color that typically falls back in space, so I used a warm blue like ultramarine to make it advance more. I used dark values in the train's shadows and high value contrast to give the train more pop. I want the train to appear to be in motion, so I added motion blurs on the back side of some edges, but tried to keep it subtle. I also made the text CSX have undefined edges, and once the paint was applied, 
I lightly smeared my finger over the top and to the right to get the motion blur. Acrylic paint blends well and dries fast, so once I mix a color, I try to apply most of it before it dries. When working in oil paint, though, you, have, you can take more of a relaxed approach because of the extended drying time. However, I would not be able to hold the painting in place with my fingers like I've been doing on a wet oil painting without ruining the surface and getting my fingers messy. So both media have pros and cons. If I'm doing an oil painting, I typically have an easel which keeps it in place and oriented vertically. When you're starting a painting, it can seem like a large task, so I try to simplify by reducing objects to shapes of color. Painting and drawing go hand in hand, so drawing shapes correctly to scale and proportion is critical for illusion, which is why I use the projector to trace my source photo. I often block in an average or middle value color I've mixed first, and then I'll use a dark value for a shadow and a light value for highlight. With just three values, you can often get a decent illusion of space. Matching the color of an object, known as local color, is also important. But with enough practice, I'm fairly confident I can match most colors with just a warm and cool version of each primary color, plus black and white. I mean, look at a color printer. It only uses four colors, plus the white of the paper, to match almost any color from our environment. In total, I spent about seven hours on this painting. I hope you've enjoyed the ride. Please feel free to leave comments on the Bellevue Branch Facebook page. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. Happy creating!